It's been a long time since we updated my open field legendary investment tier list oriented towards free to play and low spending players. And in this video, there's actually a couple things we need to do. The first is we need to bump down Belisarius Prime and adjust for the reality of what he's meant for the game. And we also need to go in and we need to add the new infantry that's Wallace. And technically we can also rank Skippy A, but I think he's got more of a niche role for rallying specifically. Now, as a reminder for how this list is intended to be used, if you were thinking, man, I wanna go invest in a legendary commander, should I pick this commander or not? In my opinion, you start at the very top of this list, the top priority commanders. From there, you bump down, if you've maxed all those, to the low priority commanders. There's a few commanders I've got recommendations for that are really, in my opinion, best suited before Season of Conquest. Once you get to the end game, you should not start investing in these commanders. And then there's these niche role commanders that you really should only invest in them if you know exactly what you're doing. Because yeah, starting to invest in William in the middle of 2024, as an example, is a little bit sus. So you really need to know, like, hey, is this a great place for me to be putting Universal Legendary Commander Sculptures? So let's start by updating this list for Belisarius Prime. I had thought, when I was predicting how impactful he would be, that he would be a top priority commander, that he, with his incredible all-damage-taken debuff to surrounded targets, would be critical. And I would say that yeah, he is really good for swarming garrisons. He's all right in the open field, but William does so many good things in the open field. It's actually crazy how valuable the William buffs are and also his debuffs are. So I think the reality here for Belisarius Prime is that we probably need to bump him down to niche role. You don't really see him at all in Canyon. So it's not like he's got some special thing he's doing there. Unlike Huo, who as it turns out, now that they recently changed Canyon so that Huo counts as having uh, been out of the city for 30 seconds right at the start of the fight, Huo is doing really good. I'm getting more value with Huo and using him with Nevsky than I am using Nevsky with Joan, which is really crazy. I, I like did not see this day coming, but here we are. So... I think Belisarius Prime is a great investment for higher spenders, is a great investment for those people that are actually going to swarm garrisons. But for your average hardworking fielder, I think unfortunately my prediction here really missed the mark. I think he's niche role. I think he's not bad, but I don't think he is a top priority for investment, certainly not compared to Amazingly, we're still talking about Nevsky and Joan. I would probably argue that just about any combination of Huo, Nevsky or Joan would be better than putting Belisarius Prime into that mix. So if you were making one cavalry march, I think you do end up staying away from the Belisarius Prime, which like kind of a bummer, but we are where we are and maybe other commanders coming into the game could revive him. But I think this is just a whale's commander to help you do whale things. And that's where I'm at with that. Now, there are other commanders on this list I do want to revisit ones like Guan Yu. People are asking a lot of questions. We will get there. First, I want to rank Wallace. And Wallace, oh man, I suspected that he would be all the way up here. But after having done testing, I think his reality is that he goes maybe here, okay? So what is the role that Wallace is fulfilling? Well, infantry is in this weird spot of apparently just becoming normal attack damage focus. They are a smite focused set of commanders. And you've got this very, very strange blend of like, hey, the new direction is smite with the old direction of like Guan Yu and Sargon being, and Tanakim and Ziad being these heavily skill damage focused commanders. So they're in this very weird spot. And I think if you already have your Alexander the Great, you probably can skip investing in Wallace. Now, I think that Wallace with Liu Che is really good, and it is an extremely powerful march, like the best march we've tested for your sort of dueling situations. And if you're running it down, Wallace might end up being better than Alexander the Great. But I think the way the overwhelming majority of people open field 
is they like try to target their enemy and the second they get targeted, they back off. And I've seen even the biggest, baddest kingdoms in the game play this way. So if you're going to do this like very back and forthy open fielding stuff, as it turns out, all that instant proc damage on Alexander the Great is really good. Omniarch also recently fought in a KVK, and he's pointed this out in the past, where he just felt like using Alexander the Great was better than messing around with Wallace. And I will be maxing Wallace before I fight in just a moment. My fight is on Thursday. So if you want to see me run around, I, I probably end up maxing Wallace. I probably end up maxing the new rally lead as well. In fact, I'm like 99% sure that's what I'm going to be doing. So uh, yeah, I'll I'll test these commanders. I'll see how they do in actual fights, okay? So that's coming very soon. But if I were putting money on it right now, what I would say is if you've already maxed Alexander the Great, that's a great way to go, okay? You use Liu Cha, Alexander the Great, and he's got two levels of museum buffs now. So if you have those two levels of museum buffs and you're going to commit to continuing to put museum buffs onto him, like, great, Liu Cha, Alexander the Great. If you are a newer player and you're going to need a ton of these museum buffs for other things, or you're not feeling like, you know, you want to put a ton of sculptures in Alexander the Great, Wallace would be an alternative instead, okay? Now, what's funny is I actually do think if you have the really large and growing amount of museum currency you're going to need for Alexander the Great, he is probably the best pre-season of conquest investment and also esong just got a buff recently the third tier of his museum buff so if you have like bottomless amounts of this currency sure esong also is a great choice but i don't know man what i'm thinking is that with the quantity of currency you need for the museum going up and up and up and up and up and up and up and, up. and the fact that Commanders like Guan Yu now get a museum buff. Uh, you're just going to need so much of that currency. It's getting kind of absurd. So I, I, I almost feel like the museum system is intended to be a catch-up mechanic. And it doesn't work that way because you need too much of the currency. Now, that's easily solvable by giving newer players lots of that currency. But what I'm pointing out here is the fact that Wallace is a substitute for Alex. If you already have the Alex and the museum currency to continue to invest in him, he's going to be great. Let's actually take Skippy A, and let's rank him. And he's not an open fielder. In my opinion, he's just for rallies. We tested him for the open field, and what we found is that, like, yeah, he's, he's cool and all, but he doesn't have any defensive stats, and he, just, like, area of effect damage kills his march. So you need to put him with the fattest stat stick of all time, and, like... I think he'll be okay for swarming garrisons, but for regular open field, I had planned to use him. I do not currently plan to use him. Maybe as I make more arch stuff, I will down the road feel like, yeah, my, my arch formation is two. I have two sets that are really crazy. Maybe then I'll feel like, yeah, this is what we do. But for now, I don't think he's great for the open field. And I would actually probably just stick with the Guan who recently got a museum buff, which may make you wonder, just cool. Is it worth investing in Guan in the middle of 2024? And I would say that, man, if you have not started that project already, I, I probably wouldn't start it now. And the reason is not that Guan is not good now. It's that, like, how long of a life is this dude going to have? He's been on life support forever. He just got the museum buff, so his life support continues. He actually is still meta in Canyon but also the direction for infantry is moving further and further away from skill damage, which means that if you work on your wedge formation, um, infantry stuff, eventually that could become low relevance or irrelevant entirely. I would assume for the rest of time, infantry are maybe just going to only get smite commanders. And if that's true, then Sargon's in a weird spot. Guan Yu is in a weird spot. I don't think they're great to start investing in now. With that said, skill damage debuffs are really good, and the Guan Yu silence is really good. So if you're swarming a garrison, yeah, the Sargon debuff is extremely valuable. Yeah, the Guan Yu silence is extremely valuable, whether it's open field or swarming a garrison. Like, those effects are actually just generally very, very good. So I don't think I would take these commanders and put them in the just no category. We'll leave them in niche wall. And like, sure, if you're getting them from the daily special offer and over time, that's how you cook. Okay, 
Like that I can support. I can support that for Guan. I could support that for Nebu. I could support that for William. Like these are commanders, even Henry, I can support that as being your vehicle for getting the commander, right? But I would not put Universal Legendary Commander Sculptures into those commanders at this time. So this means that I think Zuge Leong and also Liu Cha and Herman Prime are probably your best commanders and best investments in the game right now. I still think the original Skippy Prime, original legendary Skippy, is an amazing addition, and I keep him in that low-priority category. Somehow, Nevsky and Joan continue to thrive, and, you know, hey, if you invested early, you're not complaining about it, I'm not complaining about it, I'll take it. From there, I think Wallace is a pretty legit investment if you do not already have Alexander the Great, like I said earlier, and if you do not have the museum currency to keep investing in Alexander the Great or to take him to that two, you know, the double relic situation, then I'd say go for Wallace. And, you know, if Wallace had more open field utility, I would say that his role would be more critical, but he doesn't. Remember, all he's got is some debuff removal, which is nice, right? Like he removes march speed debuffs, that's cool, and a little bit of shielding. Those are cool things. They're good. But for perspective, uh, you know, I have tried to find a role for him in Canyon. Chadsky has tried to find a role for him in Canyon. I am not saying Canyon is a reflection of what typical open field sort of looks like, but if, if he doesn't get a role there, that's not a great sign. Like if he, was, if he was incredibly awesome in Canyon, we'd be like, oh, maybe he could be incredibly awesome in field. I mean, I think he's good. Don't get me wrong. I think low priority is right. And also, Ash sort of stays where he is. I don't think we have any new archers to displace him. And I also think, like, yeah, we got another level on the Esong Museum buff, but, you know, Ash is still really quite good for the open field. And weirdly, even though we've got all these new Smite Commanders and the Smite Talent Tree, I do not think we revive Gorgo out of the niche role category. She is good. And if you're moving all in on a bunch of Smite Commanders, you can use her in the field. I personally will probably not be using her in the field with two infantry marches and a leadership infantry march. I probably end up with one smite-based march, which for me, it's probably going to be the Wallace just so I can showcase it with Liu Cha. Then I'm going to have probably one skill damage-based march, and that is going to be probably Guan Yu, and I may just take the Sargon for the debuffs and I'm married for now to my Trajan leadership equipment, which is what it is. <laughs> so that probably ends up being Trajan with Skippy. I would not recommend emulating that in 2024, even though Trajan is critical if you want to rank well in Canyon. I mean, maybe there's some ways around it. And who knows, with the whole change where we might be getting six marches to field in Canyon, maybe that will change. So for now... That's the game plan. Of course, if you're looking for more information about infantry for the open field, tomorrow I plan to launch a refreshed guide for what I think the best pairings really are. And if you want to check out the testing that I did with Wallace in the open field, check the card in the end screen. It'll be right over here in just a second.